A Culture of Oppression In the shimmering sunlight that dances across Barbados' pristine beaches, it's easy to be captivated by the island's beauty. But beyond the postcard-perfect scenery lies a reality far more complex, a reality defined by a stark disparity between the image projected to the world and the lived experiences of its people. Welcome to Barbados, where the facade of progressivism on the international stage belies a reality of deep-rooted oppression at home. The island nation, known for its picturesque beaches and vibrant culture, grapples with systemic issues that undermine its democratic values and threaten the safety and security of its citizens. Prime Minister Mia Motley, described by the Times as bold, fearless, and possessing a great intellect and wit, has been praised for her advocacy for climate justice and championing reparations for historical injustices. She seems to possess in the eyes of the world a remarkable ability to tackle pressing issues head on. Yet, on home soil, the country is confronted with a different reality. Within the borders of her own nation, a different narrative unfolds. A narrative of systemic injustice and persistent inequality. Despite her international acclaim, challenges persist within her own government, raising questions about the efficacy of her administration. While Prime Minister Motley projects an image of compassion and leadership to the world, her government faces criticism for its handling of domestic affairs. Allegations of corruption and human rights abuses have tarnished Barbados' reputation and eroded public trust in the political establishment. To understand the present, we must first confront the past. Barbados' history is a tale of exploitation and resistance rooted in the brutal practices of slavery. In 1661, the island etched its name into infamy with the Barbados Slave Code, a draconian legal framework that reduced human beings to chattel property. This code, the first of its kind in the English Americas, laid the groundwork for centuries of oppression and exploitation, leaving an indelible mark on the island's collective consciousness. But oppression did not end with emancipation. Even in contemporary Barbados, echoes of the past linger, casting a long shadow over the present. Recent incidents, such as the traumatic school safety drill at Springer Memorial School and the controversial IDB survey administered to Barbadian first formers, serve as a painful reminder of systemic failures and institutional neglect. Meanwhile, archaic laws, such as the ongoing prohibition of marijuana, perpetuate injustice and hinder societal progress, leaving marginalized communities trapped in a cycle of poverty and disenfranchisement. Against this backdrop of historical injustice, the proposed purchase of Drax Hall by the motley-led Barbadian government has ignited a firestorm of controversy. Drax Hall, once a site of untold horrors for enslaved Africans, now stands as a symbol of generational wealth and privilege for the descendants of slave owners. The prospect of transferring public funds to the hands of those who profited from the exploitation of our ancestors has sparked outrage and reignited calls for reparations, a reckoning with the past 
that remains elusive. But as Barbados marches into the digital age, a new threat looms on the horizon. The Cybercrime Bill of 2024. Ostensibly aimed at combating online threats, this legislation raises serious concerns about censorship, private infringements, and the suppression of dissent. With its broad provisions and vague definitions, the bill threatens to erode fundamental rights and freedoms, turning the internet, a once promised bastion of free expression, into a tool of state control. The proposed legislation in Barbados has sparked intense debate and scrutiny. Critics argue that its sweeping powers and ambiguous language pose a grave risk of government overreach, potentially infringing upon fundamental rights and freedoms. At the heart of the controversy lies the bill's broad provisions and vague definitions, granting law enforcement unprecedented authority to seize electronic devices and compel telecommunication companies to surrender user data. Such measures, critics contend, not only jeopardize individuals' right to privacy, but also undermine the principles of due process and judicial oversight. Moreover, the bill's ambiguous language, which criminalizes a myriad of online activities, has raised alarm bells among civil liberties advocates. By criminalizing acts that may cause annoyance, inconvenience, danger, embarrassment, insult, injury, humiliation, intimidation, hatred, anxiety, or substantial emotional distress, the legislation risks creating a chilling effect on free expression, stifling dissent, and silencing legitimate forms of public discourse. As Barbados grapples with the implications of the Cybercrime Bill 2024, it is crucial to contextualize these developments within a global landscape rife with similar challenges and controversies. Across the world, governments are enacting cybercrime laws that raise serious concerns about the erosion of fundamental rights and freedoms. In Egypt, for instance, the cybercrime law empowers authorities to prosecute individuals on vague grounds, such as threatening national security, undermining family values, or affecting public morals, without providing precise definitions for these offenses. This lack of clarity enables the government to wield unchecked power, leading to arbitrary arrests and infringements on freedom of expression. Notably, the case of Wael Abbas, a prominent journalist and human rights advocate, underscores the perils of such legislation. Armed police officers raided Abbas's home without a warrant, highlighting the authorities' willingness to silence dissent through intimidation and coercion. Similarly, in Bahrain, the cybercrime law grants multiple government bodies the authority to block and censor a wide array of websites without the need for a court order. This sweeping power enables the government to suppress any content deemed critical of the ruling regime, including material that challenges the status quo or questions the actions of government officials. The case of the al Wasat newspaper serves as a poignant example of the chilling effect of such legislation where censorship is used as a tool to stifle independent journalism and dissenting voices. These examples underscore the broader trend of governments worldwide, leveraging cybercrime laws to tighten their grip on power and silence dissent. As Barbados navigates the complexities of the digital age, it must heed the lessons of these global developments and ensure that any legislation enacted upholds the principles of democracy, transparency, and respect for human rights. The Cybercrime Bill 2024 presents a pivotal moment for Barbados 
to demonstrate its commitment to safeguarding the rights of its citizens and upholding democratic values in the digital realm. It is incumbent upon lawmakers and civil society alike to ensure that any legislation enacted strikes a delicate balance between security imperatives and the preservation of individual liberties, lest the promise of the internet as a beacon of free expression be extinguished under the weight of state control. In the face of adversity, Barbados stands at a crossroads. As citizens demand accountability, transparency, and genuine progress, the island must confront its tumultuous past and chart a path forward rooted in justice and equality. By acknowledging the legacies of oppression that continue to shape our society, we can begin to dismantle the structures of inequality and build a future where all Barbadians can thrive. As our journey through the heart of Barbados comes to a close, it's imperative to reflect on the profound themes and revelations uncovered along the way. From the tranquil shores to the bustling streets, we've peeled back the layers of this vibrant nation to reveal a narrative steeped in both beauty and brutality. Throughout our exploration, one resounding truth has emerged. The interconnectedness of historical injustices and contemporary forms of oppression. From the echoes of the Barbados slave code to the shadows of Drax Hall, the legacy of exploitation casts a long shadow over the island, shaping its socio-political landscape in profound ways. Yet, amidst the darkness, there is a glimmer of hope, a call to action for all who bear witness to this story. We must engage critically with the issues of oppression that plague our society, advocating for systemic change and working tirelessly towards a more just and equitable future. So, let us heed this call, not as passive observers, but as active agents of change. Let us stand in solidarity with the marginalized and oppressed, amplifying their voices and demanding accountability from those in power. For it is only through collective action and unwavering determination that we can truly chart a path toward liberation for Barbados and for all humanity.